everyone, how are you? It's Rabbi Bregman. By popular demand, we're going to be returning once again the Ask Rabbi B series. Now, it's been almost two years since we did this. A lot of people have been checking out the old clips and asking me, hey, can you get back to doing the Q&A series on video? That is supremely helpful, number one. Number two, a lot of people have been reaching out asking me for FaceTime. And I don't mean uh, iPhone style. Can you get together? Can we connect? Can I sit down with you? Can I pick your brain for 30 minutes or whatnot? It's very hard to do. So uh, just schedule-wise, not because I don't love you. So what we're going to be doing is um, I'm going to be getting back to doing those kind of videos. My production team has uh, offered to help me capture that, film that. Uh, if you live in the New York City area, you want to get together for 15 minutes or half an hour, schedule permitting. If you're willing to do it on camera and ask me all your questions, a live business, Torah, success, matchmaking, dating, sales, marketing, social media, business law, all the things that I do, I'd be happy to sit and do it with you. Um, and you know, we'll share it with other people. Anyway, in today's clip, um, I don't know if it's 30 minutes or whatnot, I sat down with two uh, young professionals. Uh, they each run their own companies and they're very busy, active people. One guy, he's involved in a real estate. The second fellow, he's involved in uh, making movies and film production. And I think in this clip, we spoke about all, a lot of those things we spoke about before, making money, success, uh, getting started, raising money, investors, sales, marketing, getting attention for your service, clarity, and climbing up. So anyway, hope you have a lot of value from this clip. And um, if you have a question for me, fire away in video or otherwise. Hi, everybody. So I'm sitting here with these young professional gentlemen, Carlos and Hubert in uh, Stamford, Connecticut. These are young up and coming superstars in real estate <laughs> and in film and video production. Yes. These young guys are, they're, they're young in age, about half my age, but uh, they, they more than make up for that in wisdom. Not in good looks and style also, <laughs> good try. but um, they wanted to get together tonight and pick my brain in terms of sales, marketing, business, uh, and things like that. So I'm giving them some FaceTime uh, not not the uh, phone FaceTime, but you know, face to face time to answer some of their questions, and um, hopefully we'll be able to capture some of the content, and I'll share it with you, and it'll be a benefit and value to you because I love you and I want to give. So, fellas, how can I help you? What would you like to know? Yeah. Pick my brain. And so I'll give you what I got. Yeah, definitely. So, um, starting off the bat, I wanted to ask you. How did you find money to feed your business and from like the very beginning as soon as you realized you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Sure, so that's a great question. So for me, I had to start out by doing what I would be able to make money with and then using the extra, if there was any, or my extra time or energy. So the extra was extra time or extra energy to go and try and build something else. So when I was 24, for example, I had finished law school, I was a new attorney, and I was also a young rabbi. So my first uh, full-time job was as a rabbi. I was making a nice salary, mm. and, um, and simultaneously I opened up my law firm. But I was able to basically cover the basic bills and expenses and whatnot from the, from the communal work, and then I was able to, with my extra time, which was not much extra, but go out and begin to find clients and try to build up the law firm. So um, I would say in the beginning, a person has to stay afloat, <laughs> survive, and do what you need to do to make sure that you know you don't go hungry. And if you have an iPhone or whatever you have, <laughs> that the, the bill gets paid and it, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't go dead and you don't get an eviction notice and whatever else. Um, but I think that we all have more time in the day than we realize. You know, we have 168 hours in the week, seven times 24, last I checked is 168. I, I don't work for one day of the week. I still got a lot of time left, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a question of making sure you get done what you need to get done to cover your basics. And then with your extra time, it could be in the evenings, it could be early mornings, it could be a lunch break and everything else. With your extra money, you try to build it up. Sometimes the entrepreneurial ventures we have require extra time and energy right. to get the traction going. So I did that with my law, my law, I was able to get that up, that funnel, basically I was able to get that flow going, but I first had to get, you know, the, the rabbi, 
the rabbi life, <laughs> I had that going. Because it was a mainstream of in income. Yeah. Was that your mainstream stream of income? When I was younger, yeah. Okay. In the beginning, yeah, that was my main great, source of great. income. Okay. I mean, yeah. a lot of people started off and they don't really know um, how to manage money, time. Yes. Um, what would you suggest? Uh, sure. Well, some people don't, in the beginning, people don't even have much money to manage. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So I would say, I mean, for, for starters, I would say this is, it's sort of as a general rule. A person needs to become super clear on where they want to go and where they want to end up. You need to become clear. And then the way I manage my time is I basically become clear on what are my targets and goals. Mm -hmm. And I only fill my day pretty much with activities that will put me in furtherance of hitting those tasks. Mm -hmm. So so since I have you know one of my companies, Bregman Success LLC, I do sales training and marketing training and social media, and I help build that for uh, individuals and companies. So connecting with you guys right. and getting more information that can help people out there, you know, is in furtherance of one of my goals. So time gets invested in, right? Um, I don't play video games <laughs> and I don't party. <laughs> I don't. I don't either. <laughs> yeah, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> I have nothing against people who want to go to parties or video games, but I'm saying that. No, I, love, I love a party, though. Yeah. I love a party. Yeah. You like a party? <laughs> I like to party. Well, you're, you're single, and I'm not. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can do your thing, Hubert. Good. But. I can do my thing. <laughs> yeah, you do your thing. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, but so, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, so that's in terms of that, and then in terms of money. <laughs> look, person has to be smart, and look, some things you could spend money on will make you more money. You know, investing in your mind or in your relationships can actually earn you and produce you more. Like, let's say I pick up a book and I see a book is like a $25 book. I don't look at that book as 25 bucks. I'm like, where should I spend it? You, you look at the value. Yeah, it's I'm going. thinking, I, 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 I picked up a marketing book the other day. How many marketing books I've read? And I was thinking, it was like nine bucks on like Amazon or something. Yeah. It was like a, a classic from a couple years. I'm thinking, I could probably make six figures with something I got in there. Or, but I'll, or maybe at least a, a thousand, <laughs> you know, something. But definitely more than nine dollars. So right. I would say a person, especially when you're, you know, shouldn't spend yeah. the money, you know, to that, that things all, are not going to return that, to anything, you know? Right. That all comes with perception. And how do you, I mean, how does someone switch from, you know, seeing just the nine dollars from, you know, okay, that nine dollars will bring me six figure? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think a lot of it starts out with becoming clear. Back to this point on what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. If because when a person's mind is clear, you begin to see all around you things that can get you further to your goals and things that can get you further away, right? Mm -hmm. So like, let's say a person, I mean, you, you work out, right? I saw you on Facebook. You know, you some, you some, <laughs> I don't care about that. Okay, I'm not gonna say more, but yes. Let, let's not do, do it on the camera. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you, know, you, you know about the gym. So let's say a person's goal is to get like all like buff and ripped and whatever else and look, you know, a certain kind of way, right? Let's say a person, that's their goal. If you're, that's really something you're really into, everything is connected to that. <clears throat> you're thinking, oh, maybe I'm not gonna take the elevator, I'll take the stairs up the sixth floor. What you I'll, focus you on know, the expense. Yeah, and you see that, and you see that everywhere. Oh, I'll burn some more calories, or you think this, oh, I could pick up this, or I could learn another health thing here, or I can get in a few reps here. Like, every, your whole world, your mind, your mind's eye begins to see that kind of opportunity everywhere. So for me, that kind of focus, comes from understanding first, what do you want to hit? Mm -hmm. When you have that, then you start asking yourself constantly those questions. Mm -hmm. Does this loop, the thing I'm looking at right now, does it loop back towards the goals or mm -hmm. does it not? So, you know, today I was, you know, had a top, uh, I was on a podcast with a top Christopher, iTunes, right? Christopher J. Ward. Yeah, there we go. So that's, I was on, my, you know, that's my guy right there. there no quit go. living, I love it. There we go, so you know, so, so why did I do that? Because it was, I could loop it back you know, with a straight line to my goals on my pages. Mm -hmm. When I was talking to a top university today about organizing another TED talk with them, you know, and doing loops back. Meeting right. with you guys, loops back. I went to the gym today and lifted, you know, loops, loops back, back to my goals. All the time with my kids today, you know, loops back. It just, it just, that's the way I view it. Um, and if you're clear, very clear on where you want to be, um, it'll be fresh on your mind. Is this going to get me closer to where I want to be or, or further? Away. And mm -hmm. closer could be a little bit closer and further could be a lot further. Not everything's a, you know, a, a home run. It could be a single. Not everything is mm -hmm. a strikeout, you know? It could, it could be... It, a base. It could, yeah, a base, yeah, yeah, you know? So, it's, so that's how I sort of, that's how I view it.
what recommendations do you have for like young entrepreneurs who want to advertise their work or product? Let's say you have something you feel like it's great enough to put out there and you don't know how to, you know, get yourself known or tell others, hey, I exist, <laughs> you sure. know, or my product exists. What would you recommend? Sure, I would say there's basic two basic ways of getting your name kind of out there. Um, one is by basically in Yiddish, which is a Jewish language, we have a word called schwitz, which schwitz. means sweat. Okay? <laughs> what is a schwitz? Hard work. Hustle. Just basically just doing whatever you can, running around, giving out flyers, spamming people, texting people, WhatsApp, whatever you do, just basically hard work and push and human effort. The other way to do it is possibly if you have money, you can advertise. It could be a targeted post, it could be on Facebook, it could be on Instagram. Yeah. You know, I mean, today it's, it doesn't make so much sense to put on a bill, put up a billboard somewhere, but like, right, you know, right. you could spend money or hustle. Time and effort, schwitz, or, or money, right? Now, when I was first getting started, and all the things I was doing, I had nothing. I was like, had nothing to negative, right? So all I had was my time. All I had was my hard work, right? Mm. I, didn't, I didn't have any resource, I had no budget. And so I got to a certain point in my life, in my career, using all kinds of free resources, right? So my, I, until recently, I wasn't even on Gmail. Like you messaged me on oh, Gmail, wow. I was on AOL. <laughs> I was on AOL wow, until like a couple months ago, for real, for real, right? I was on, on AOL, you know? So but my AOL was free, um, my YouTube was free, you know, whatever phone, now it's an eight, then it was a seven, then it was six, five, whatever phone was in my pocket, that was my video equipment, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? For hundreds of videos on YouTube. It was in my, I mean, it wasn't free, I had to get it, but you know, the camera, right. that, the phone that was in my, that was my camera, it was free. Um, I, my mail list, I didn't have any uh, email programs. I would just basically paste in these big bricks everybody's email addresses, you know, into, and then send out like 10 emails with like a big brick in the send box, because that was free. Um, Facebook was free, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and like, I just used all these like free resources because I didn't have money. Right. And I actually, that, it's not I just didn't have money, there was times that I was, life was real tight. And even a couple of years ago, there were spots when I, I almost didn't even have food. It was like real, real tight, mm -hmm. like for real. Oh, wow. Like that's real, you know? Mm. Like food, I'm not wow. talking I'm not talking a swag, I'm talking food, you know? <laughs> so all you have in those times is you, all you have is your hard work and your effort and your push and 100 hour work weeks, because all you have. Right. Okay, and a good attitude, of course, you of know? Of course, you always need that. Yeah, to, to fuel it, but then, so then, then you could grow to a point when you have more traction, then you can use money to even get further ahead sometimes, you know? You can have a, let's say you're, you know, for a product or service, you can maybe drop $200 on a Facebook ad, and maybe right. you'll hit 28,000 people, and you know, the ROI, maybe you'll you know, end up pulling $1,900 in cash, you basically made it, you know, came out ahead, 1,700, you know? Right. You can start using money many times to get further, um, you know, further ahead. But that's the basic way, you know, you have time, you have effort. Um, for me, I'm trying to use both. I haven't let, taken my foot off the <laughs> gas pedal of life. I'm still pushing crazy hard and I'm hungry to keep going, God willing, to the next level. But um, thank God now there's more of a budget to, uh, right, you know, to, to, you know, to, yeah, to resource-wise. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yes. That okay, because if not, I'll keep going. I want to make, sure, <laughs> make sure you have an answer. I'm not talking for my health, you know? Um, so, I mean, Having a goal, knowing where you are and knowing where you want to go, how do you find the patience to stick to, okay, I know where I'm going and there are days that it gets tough and you just don't want to do it. What, what, do you, what would you suggest? What would you yeah. advise? Yeah, so I would say that, you know, that thing with patience um, is a huge variable and who makes it and who doesn't because time, it can fix a lot of things, but you have to have the patience to throw the time at the situation. Mm. It could be with your relationships, it could be with your finances, it could be with your getting yourself physically in shape. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, time helps and heals a lot. Correct. The challenge is time is just a few letters, T-I-M-E, but it takes time you know, and you have to have that. You know, we live in a society where people are interested more in immediate gratification, you know? So time helps. I, I have a expression I say in my household a lot and to people I work with is throw some time at it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> mm -hmm. even doing the right thing, 
but with time, but it's not going to work without time. Even famous people in all different kind of areas, they didn't get to where they were. It's still, they still had to grind three, five, seven, nine, twelve years sometimes yeah. until you know until they broke until through. They hit, yeah. You know, all the way through. So I think number one, time is a huge factor. After that, Hubert, the next thing I would tell you is a person has to understand that you know you have to become very acute and aware if the efforts you're making are actually getting traction. How do you keep up track of that? Well, you you have to know what you're doing. If you you know you sell, let's say you sell real estate, buy real estate, flip real estate, which is which is terrific. You have to know: Am I getting better? Am I getting closer to sales? Did I make a first sale um, in in the first month? You know, I. I signed up three exclusives, and in the second month, four. You know, is it in the first six months I had one, I made one sale, and the second six months I made three? Track your data. Know the facts. The facts aren't going to lie to you. You know, if you if you keep honest data, mm -hmm. you have to tell yourself the truth. So many people that are trying to climb in life, they lie to themselves. They lie to themselves because they want it. They want it to work. You know, you have to know. Is the data, like, is it true? Are you winning? Are you getting ahead? Is something happening? Are you making better connections? Is it happening? Or like straight up, are you exactly where you were all along? Right. If you're exactly where you were all along, something didn't work. Something's not working. So you could either tweak it, or maybe there's something like broken here and it's just you're in the wrong thing. Like, mm -hmm. like for me, when I was like, um, starting to, and I think this is gonna really help and hopefully our, our you know, our whoever watches the video yeah. also, you know, when I was, I'll give you a, like real straight talk, like what happened with me. Like when I, I mean, I was a rabbi for many years before, but like I was, I was teaching Torah full time for five years. Then I took off a hiatus of like almost like seven years, maybe six years, almost where I was learning Torah full time. I was already a rabbi, but I was in like, you could call it like post graduate rabbi level studies, we call it Kolel, right? Mm -hmm. And then I basically, you know, put myself out there again, right? And let's say the end of 210. So when I started teaching again publicly, like, you know, to reveal what I had to give and share in 210, the first time I gave a class, 10 people came. So mm -hmm. one person said to me like, it's like, I mean, you know, you're already a known rabbi, and only 10 people came. So, you know, kind of like, you know, like letting the air, yeah, some air out of, a little, a little air out of time. But no, but, but listen how I heard it. I said, whoa, 10 people came. If I get 10, I can get, I, I can get to 20. Mm. If I can get to 20, I can get to 50. And once you get to, I can get to 100, right? right. So some people look at 10 and go, oh, I only got 10. And then they get impatient and they're not willing to put in the time, you know, to keep grinding forward, right? You got it? But for me, I was like, no, but I got 10. If I can get 10, so I can get to 100. If I can get mm. to 100, I can get to 1,000. But that, that's, a, that's a different mindset, you know, and not everybody has that mindset. How do you develop that mindset from... Uh, in early stage at 24. Yeah, well the answer is you have to see what's there and have potential and and be honest with the reaction you're getting. If, if the, that class I gave in 210 at a guy named Steve Eisenberg's apartment in uh, Manhattan in the Upper West Side, Steve, wherever you are, if you ever catch this video, I love you. I'm grateful to you forever, right? So, you know, for opening his home, right? But. You know, so I saw, it, but like there wasn't like ten people were like this is lame and like you know they they were into it they were they were into it they were having a good time they were you know interested so you see the feedback oh so if these ten liked it maybe I could you know build and climb you know I'm, I'm, you have to look at the you have to look at the data there's some things that time cannot fix and hard work cannot fix okay right. I'm you know I'm I'm five eleven two twenty solid Jewish boy okay I ain't gonna dunk on LeBron. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could throw time at it. I could I could work on my calf. It's just not happening. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not gonna play offensive line for the New York Giants. I'm not even gonna be a kicker at this point. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like there's just some things that time is not gonna help. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think it would be a good idea for me to become a, a heavyweight boxer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just <laughs> don't have the length, the reach. Just it just it just it's just not gonna end not gonna well. Happen, so yeah. so time's not. You know what I mean? I, so the writing's kind of on the wall. Well, but now, it, now, you know? that, now that comes with choosing the right things to do in life. Right. How did you find out what you really wanted to do? And how did you find that out? So I think it has to do with being aware, aware of yourself telling yourself the truth and living in reality, okay? Living in reality. Um, there was things that I tried to do in high school, in middle school, and in college mm -hmm. that I just saw 
really seemed to work and people liked and you know they received. The other things I tried to do, I wasn't getting traction. Well, you were kept trying, kept trying. Yeah, yeah, you kept trying, but you eventually see a theme. Okay, when I was 16 years old, um, on the Jewish High Holy Day, we have called Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. I was 16, and I was asked to speak in front of 2,000 people at the closing service at the end of the holiday, right? I was asked to speak, okay, at 2,000 people. And I was 16, and I didn't even prep so much. I just wrote up what I was going to say. I got up there, and I killed it. I, hmm. I rocked it. And I was were, like, were you nervous at all? I mean, 2,000 people? Yeah, that's uh, a No, I actually yeah, I'm, I'm nervous right now. I'm, like, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, you know, look it, but no, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous. Honestly, I wasn't nervous, and I just knew up, and I was going to get there, get up there, and I was just going to just say my thing, and I, and I had it. I just knew it, and I just did it. And everyone afterwards was like, whoa, that 16-year-old brought it on his, you know, for a 16-year-old. <laughs> that's that's you know? a but, pretty big feat. No, but I'm saying, yeah. but, so I, I noticed I wasn't trying to prove a point. I just, I did, but it worked. You know, I saw it when I was in, um, in like the debate club in high school and stuff. I always was good. I won. You know, I did well. When there was an oral presentation that you had to give in Spanish, like to give a, uh, for four minutes or three minutes, you have to give a, a speech in Spanish or a presentation, and then the teacher gives you a grade. I, I was good with that kind of stuff. So it's all the pathway that leads you to being a lawyer. Yeah, so this was part of it. So what happened was I was accepted to medical school. I had the chance uh, to, to go down that medical school doctor pathway like all my other relatives and my family, all the other men are doctors. Mm -hmm. But I liked using my mouth. I like talking. I like being with the people. The, to me, the best part of what would have been a medical career was to uh, schmooze and talk with a patient. That would have been the best part. That would have been the so best you, part. You, yeah, yeah. How, how, you, you're good at you know talking. Yeah. No. So so for me, I understood that it was, but it wasn't. So but I connect the dots. Well, that's that's your natural strength. Right. So, but but I you hear what I'm saying. I connected the dots. Hmm. I'm doing well in the debate. Doing well in the classes with the speech. I'm doing well. With my friends. I'm making my friends laugh you know, hanging out at lunch and whatever else. I'm always like fun and I like people and I make them feel good. I was able, you know? And then I also saw that I was able to synthesize a lot of information that I was like learning and present it in a way that people could understand, which is separate of just talking, separate of making people laugh or, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, to take a lot of complex info and to present it in a way people could understand, you know? Um, then I also, for example, I ended up working on Capitol Hill in college in the house and in the Senate, right? I was on the Republican side and the Democrat side. I worked on both sides in Congress, and I was good at that too. I was good at understanding the laws and how to and explain them to regular people and what were the issues and the framing on both sides. So I was able to get ahead, you know? So I really think a person needs to be truthful with himself and see patterns as to where you have talent and ability and strength and where you don't. And if you're honest with yourself, you can really craft a tremendous life if you rally around what's actually there, mm -hmm. right? What's actually there. So, um, and that's, so you know what I mean? So it wasn't yeah. that I like, I had clarity that I wanted to be a rabbi and a lawyer. <laughs> I, just, I just tried different things. Yeah. I just took different opportunities that kind of came up and I just kept going and going. You know, the, then the next biggest crowd I had to talk to in front of live, was when I was a rabbi, like a rookie rabbi. I was like 24, 25 at the graduation at the uh, at the university. There was like a big graduation, and I had to give like the invocation or convocation, like the, mm. the words of blessing to like 10,000 people in a basketball arena. Wow. You know what I mean? So, you know, with a mic and the capping out, I had to do that. I had it. It was fun. I wish they would have let me keep going. It they was always, fun. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun, you know? And then I ended up being oh, on yeah. like, you know, major radio stations with like 80,000 people listening at once and I wasn't nervous, I had it, mm -hmm. you know? So then you just keep going. But it starts with being real as to who you are and noticing it and seeing patterns that connect, you know? If you are truthful and are willing to build a life and a career around what you really got and not, you know, <laughs> some, some fantasy, you have a chance of making it. That's what I would say. Mm. Great, great answer. I'm just, I'm that. just, you know. Yeah. Only the real can relate, you know. Yeah. <laughs>